brothers and sisters. The title of today's message is Daddy's Girl. And this can also refer to those who consider themselves to be a son or a daughter of the Most High Yah. What many do not realize is to be called a son or a daughter of Yah is one of the highest honors that a servant can be given. And it's the highest honor because it comes with certain rights, things that are due certain advantages, allowances, and freedom. And that freedom yields benefits that allow you as his servant to claim this license to be a son or daughter of Yah. To be called a son or daughter of Yah goes beyond bloodline. And I know many of you do not want to hear this. When we read Romans 8 and 14, it says that those that are led by the Spirit of Yah are the sons of Yah. Okay. This has to do with being an heir or being heirs with Yahusha Amashiach. Okay. An heir is a successor. It is one who is next in line, a beneficiary, one who is due to receive or to inherit a benefit or a right or authority. It is the privilege that one has to be a son or daughter of Yah and to have that right to call him Daddy, Abba Father. Okay. To have that right to call him Abba Father, to have the right or the authority to call him Daddy has to do with reverence. Reverence has to have a very high opinion of something. This is when you have a high opinion of something or someone. Okay, reverence is admiration. I want to take a look at some synonyms for reverence. It means that you not only have a very high opinion of something or someone, but it means that there is some type of admiration. You admire them. There is adoration. You adore them. It means that you are in awe of them that there is devotion, meaning you are devoted to a person or a thing. It means loyalty and respect. It means having honor and to love the one that you are calling Abba, Daddy. It means praise and to worship. Okay? It means to highly esteem. It means dedication. When there is dedication for the one or towards the one that you respect, that you admire, that you adore, that you are in awe of, that you're loyal to, that you respect, that you honor and respect, there is dedication. It's, it also means to fear. This is one of the synonyms for reverence, to fear and to bow. To have the right or the authority to call Yah, Abba, Father, Daddy. This means that you must reverence him. There must be some type of admiration. You must adore him. You must be in awe of him. You must be devoted to him. There is a, 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 a high level of loyalty and respect that you honor him, you praise him. To fear and to bow. When there is fear, and I, and I mean a healthy fear, 
not a type of fear that a child would have from a father or a parent that is abusing them, mistreating them. But I'm talking about a healthy type of fear, a fear that a child has towards a parent that they respect, okay? When you have that type of fear for a parent, you bow down, you submit, you yield because you know that that fear um, is for the saving of your soul, okay? To fear and to bow. Remember, as a child um, growing up, to have fear of your parents was to respect their authority. It was to walk in obedience. When you had that healthy level of fear, reverence for your parents, you respected that they are the authority, that they are your authority, that they are superior, and you obeyed them. Another uh, synonym for reference is deference, okay? Deference means to defer. When you are deferring, this means to yield, to submit, okay? You are in compliance. This means that you will comply and you will obey what your parents, your Abba, your father, your daddy, whatever it is they're asking you to do, whatever it is that they're telling you to do, you are going to obey. You're going to do it because you reverence them, because you respect them. You um, acknowledge them as the high authority in your life, okay? A child does not, a child, and I'll say this, a child that honors their parents, that reverences their parent, okay, that has that fear of their parents, that healthy fear. An obedient child does not do things on their own, okay? An obedient child, a child that honors and reverences their parent, their daddy, they ask their parents for permission before they do anything. They don't make decisions on their own or plan out their life as the child because they recognize and acknowledge that they have a parent, okay? No, they don't do things on their own. As a child that reverences, that fears, that has that respect and honor um, of their daddy, of their parent, that child fears his or her parents Therefore, they follow the rules. They follow the plan uh, and submit and yield to the course of action as laid out by their Abba because Abba, Father, the Daddy, he is the head of the house, okay? So This is how I want you to look at your relationship with Abba Yah. When you think about your relationship with Abba Yah, think of him as Abba Father. Think of him as Daddy, as you would your own earthly father. If Yah is your father, if he is your daddy, he says, where is his honor? Where is his respect? The fifth commandment says that you shall honor your father and your mother so that your days will be long on the earth, so your days will not be cut short. So, I have a question. Does your life indicate that you honor him as Abba Father, as your daddy? Okay, do you honor Abba Yah with your mouth and your lips, but your heart is far from him? Okay, I want you to really think about that.
Does your life indicate that you honor Abba Yah as daddy, as someone that you yield and submit to, that you obey? Or are you disobedient? To be a daddy's girl or to be a son of Yah is to reverence him in fear and in love and in obedience. Okay, I want to go over a couple of precepts. Matthew 5 and 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of Yah. So those who are peacemakers will be called the sons of Yah. Are you one who cause uh bring peace within the body, or are you one who causes strife, who um causes confusion, who causes discord? Okay, do you hate your brothers and sisters um without a cause? Do you walk around in envy and jealousy? Okay. But to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of Yah. So for, for those who received our Messiah, Yahusha, who believed in his name, what his name stands for. Okay. Who he was, his character, his attributes, what he taught, how he lived, his principles. If you received him and you received him as written, as his birth was to be, you accept the fact that he was born of a virgin. Okay? You, you respect and acknowledge the scriptures when it tells us that he was born by the set apart spirit if you believe on his name and believe um the good news as he taught as it is being spoken of and written in scripture you will be given the right to become children of yah to be a son of daughter to hold the keys to the kingdom many want the keys to the kingdom but they don't want to be obedient children. They reject the chastisement and the disciplining and the rebuke. When Abiyah sends a messenger or a brother or sister in the faith to warn, you get upset. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of Yah, that we are Yah's children. If you have his Holy Spirit, his Ruach HaKadosh, the set apart spirit of Yah that is in you, it will testify with others who have his spirit that you are a son or daughter, that you are part of the family of Yah. Because I have the spirit of discernment, um, I can quickly identify others who are in the true faith, who uh, who carry um, the set-apart spirit of Yah in them. It is evident through the works um, and the deeds. Um, he says you will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. So I can um, watch and see the fruit. And that's going to tell me everything that I know. I can listen and see what are they teaching? What are their beliefs? Um, does it line up with scripture? Does it contradict what is written in scripture? How do they live their life? How do they carry themselves? What do they believe? What do they endorse? What do they support? What do they entertain? What do they watch? What are they listening to? What um what are their values? All of those things um, will help you to identify who is really a, a, ch a, ch a child of Yah, a son or a daughter of Yah. If Abba Yah is truly their daddy, the one that they yield and submit to, the one that they follow. Because if they are a son or a daughter of Yah, they will follow him. They will follow his word. They will treat those that are within the body the way that he has commanded. That we are to love our brother as ourselves. Um, we will first love Abiyah with all our 
heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then you're to love your brother or your sister as yourself, which is the second greatest command. If you do not see these things at work in a person, the aforementioned things that I just discuss um it is very uh it could be very well that they are not a son or a daughter being a son or a daughter of yah does not mean that you are a part of his creation okay um he created yah created good as well as evil but no one who is evil no one who is wicked will be in the kingdom we're all given a choice we all are given the opportunity and have the opportunity presented before us to repent. So if someone is committing adultery or they are a liar and they refuse to repent from lying, if you are full of sexual perversion or lust or uh, fornicating, um, you're stealing, um, you commit murder, you, you refuse to repent of sin and those things that he has deemed as sinful okay those things um that you know are wrong but you won't do them um as we spoke about in the teaching last week about the um the secret place of the flesh that embedded covenant because there is a law that is embedded in our body, in the flesh, the law of sin and death, and that law wants to sin. That law that's in us because of what Adam and Eve did wants to sin. It wants to miss the mark. It wants to go to hell, and it wants to drag you with it because no flesh will be in the kingdom. So we who are born again and have the Ruach HaKadosh, the set apart spirit of Yah, our job is to put on the whole armor of Yah too, because it is a daily fight. It is a war that is within, and we have to die to the flesh daily, okay, and live in the spirit and be in the presence of Yah in order to be able to overcome. So we have to put away the things um, that will cause us to grow in the flesh. We don't want that flesh to rise up and to grow, okay? So it, so it is not the children of the flesh who are Yah's children, but it is the children of promise who are regarded as offspring. So the children of promise are regarded as offspring, as children of Yah, those who are children of the spirit, the Ruach, that are born again, that have his set apart spirit. Remember, those who are being led by the spirit of Yah are the sons of Yah because his spirit is going to lead you to all truth, is going to counsel you and to and guide you. His spirit is going to convict you when you are wrong and it is for the purpose of turning you, um, putting you back on the right path. But it will not be the children of the flesh who are regarded as Yah's children because you were born on this earth does not make you a child of Yah. And I think we use it so loosely, well, I'm a child of Yah because I was born. No, you have to walk in obedience and you have to have his spirit, not just born again by water, but also born again by fire, um, by his set apart spirit, the Holy Spirit. The creation waits in eager expectation for the revelations of the sons of Yah. So even the creation is waiting for the revelation of the true sons of Yah, the true sons and daughters of Yah. All of creation is waiting for us to be revealed. And in these end times right now today, just by what a person values, what a person supports and love, if a person says that they are a son of Yah, a daughter of Yah, that they are daddy's girl, okay, Abba Yah, and they're, they support abortion, that they think that a woman has a right to choose, if they support same-sex marriages and homosexuality and all of these types of things, if they do not love what Yah loves and hate the things that he hates, then they're not a son or a daughter of Yah, no matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they say with their lips. Remember, he says, that many honor him with their mouth and their lips, he says, but their heart is far 
from him. Okay. Second Corinthians 6, 17 through 19 says, Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says Yah. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says Yah Almighty. Therefore, beloved, since we have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that defiles our body, everything that defiles the body and the spirit and bringing holiness to completion in the fear of Yah. So you bring holiness into its full completion when you fear Yah, when you reference him, when you have, when you highly esteem him, when, um, when you are in awe of him, when you obey him, he says that we are to come out from among them, come out from among them um, that do not love him, that hate him, that uh, scorn him, that mock him. Um, we are to come out from those that are of the world. We're not to be equally yoked with unbelievers. It doesn't matter how long you've known a person, how long you were friends since your, your first two fell out. Yah says that you are to come out from among them. And this even includes family members. Yah told um, Abram, before he was Abraham, to come out from his father because his father was an idolater. He says, come out from among him. Come out from your kindred. Come from your father. He said, leave that house because I am going to make a new nation from your loins. Okay? So we have to really pay attention to what is being said. It says, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. Be you set apart for I am set apart. And if you call on the Father, who without respecter of persons judges each man according to his works, he says to conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. So we are sojourners, as I stated in the last teaching um, on the flesh, that embedded, embedded covenant, okay, that we are exiles. We are to walk and live our lives as we are exiles. This is not our home. This is not our place. We want to leave here, and this body is not the body that we want to have forever. We want that glorified body that has been promised to those who um, are redeemed at the time that our Mashiach, Yahusha, returns, okay? So we are, during this time that we're on this earth, we are to fulfill the will uh, that Yah has purposed in us, using our gifts, walking in holiness, being an example, being a light unto all men so that those who see us and see the light that is in us, that our Abba Yah will be glorified and all men will be drawn unto him. We are to be a light, not only um to those within the body um, and those for us, of us who are true Israel, we are the covenant people and we were, are to be a covenant people so that we, through our light, through our obedience to his covenant, walking in his word, we would be able to draw other nations. We are not only, we were not only called to be a um, covenant people, Israel, but we were also called to be a light unto the nations, unto the Gentiles, that they might, through our love, through our obedience and walking in righteousness and holiness, would draw other nations unto him, that they too might receive salvation and be a part of the family of Yah, to be a son and a daughter of Yah, that they might be able to call him Abba, Father, Daddy, okay? So, um, as a child, um, as I stated earlier, to be a daddy's girl or to be a son or a daughter of Yah is to reference him in fear and love and obedience. Um, as a child, again, growing up, you wanted to please your parents. Okay, you followed them around. You you always um, wanted to be in their presence. I, I remember as a little child when, and even my son, when he was little, he clung to me. 
Okay, he clung to me where every room I went in, he was right there so much so to the point where I almost stepped on him a few times. And this is how Abiyah wants us. You know, as children, you follow your parents around. You always want to be in their presence. And if you did something wrong or when you did something wrong as a child, and you were chastised or punished for your wrongdoing, you always wanted to get back in your uh your your parents' right standing. Okay, you were quick to do whatever it took to be in right standing with your father. And so we need to take that same stance with Abba Yah um, because and because we know what pleases him and what displeases him, um, it becomes easier to obey him. When we put on that lens, that mindset of looking at Yah as Abba Father, when we put on that lens of looking at him as our daddy, okay, when you look at Yah as your daddy, the one you respect, the one you fear and love and would never want to displease. When you look at him through that lens, that daddy lens, it takes away the burden of viewing him as someone that's sitting up in heaven with his arms folded, ruling with an iron fist, you know, with a bunch of do's and don'ts. Um, but when you look at him as Abba, daddy, my daddy, you will begin to view him as someone who created you. He created you. Therefore, he loves you. He was mindful of you. Therefore, um, he knows what's best for you. This is how we need to look at him. Look at Abba Yah as daddy. Okay, this is the message that I want to keep pressing. That's the reason why it's entitled Daddy's Girl, but they're also uh, boys. They're not Daddy's Girls, but there are uh, young boys who are just as close, okay, with their um, their daddy. But look at Abiyah as Daddy, as the one who wants to protect you and look at his discipline. Know that his discipline or the chastisement that he may have to sometimes bring down. It only comes by way of his love. Do not despise the chastisement of Yah, okay? When we read Proverbs 3, 11 and 12, it says, My son, do not reject the discipline of Yah and do not loathe his rebuke, for Yah disciplines the one he loves as a father, um, the son in whom he delights. So Yah disciplines those that he loves just as a father in our own natural earthly realm would discipline his son or his daughter. When I have to discipline my son or my daughter, I discipline him in love and I try to be very careful with the words that I speak, I try to speak life into him and not um, death. We sometimes as parents, we have to be very careful of the words that we speak, but do not despise uh, the chastisement or, or a whole back chastisement. I know the world is now telling us don't discipline your children, don't punish your children, you can't spank your children, um, but that's not scripture. And so just in ending this, because this wasn't going to be long, I just wanted to really put this lens in your mind for you to begin to look at Yah as daddy. Yah's chastisement um, is always done out of love. When we're obedient, disobedient children because if you are a child we are in this flesh because of adam his sin passed on to us so sin is there as a part of a legal authority and covenant that has a right to be there but if you have his world cockadish and set apart spirit you are no longer because of mashiach he condemns sin in the flesh and so you are no longer a slave you no longer have to serve the flesh okay and serve sin and that doesn't mean that is not there because there are going to be times as even as with our own children they're going to mess up but 
we have someone who is an advocate, we can go to him and we can ask for forgiveness. That does not mean that we continue in uh, sin. Okay, Yah's chastisement sometimes when he has to do it, it's going to be done out of love, just as an earthly father um, does. And it's going to be done when he does chastise us. It is to prune us into bearing righteous fruit. It is to cause us to conform into the image of our Messiah, Yahusha. Um, know that uh, when Yah disciplines you, it's only because he loves you. And so this is the, the, the message that I have for you today. It wasn't going to be long. Look, begin to look at Abba Yah as uh, daddy. Look at him as daddy. Many of you listening to this may be a daddy's girl right now. You know, if you were a daddy's girl growing up, you never wanted to displease your dad. You never wanted to have your dad um, angry or upset with you. Um, you always, uh, growing up as a child, wanted to be in their presence and follow them. You admired them. You were in awe of your dad. You loved your dad. Even when you got married, if your dad did not like the choice of men uh, that you dated or, or someone you were thinking about marrying, you would go to your father and say, dad, you know, what do you think about him? Your father's opinion, your daddy's opinion was important to you um, in your choice of friends and your relationship, careers, everything. And so this is what we often do. Many of us, even today, we, many of you listening to this message right now, maybe an adult. And before you make any moves, you may not be married. You're still going to go if your dad is still alive. Abba, Daddy, what do you think about this? I was thinking about this. Why? Because you respect it. You have a high opinion of your father. You respect your father and you know that your father growing up as a child, everything he did from the disciplining to the, the rules and the uh, that was set in place, the things that he expected out of you, they were all for love. So look at Abba Yah with that same lens as daddy, someone who not only created you, but was mindful of you, that loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son. He, his son was raised for the sole purpose of nourishing you, okay, so that you could grow up into full completion of who he has called you to be. Yah is excited to see the work began, to see the work in you begin. So for those of you, even if you're stumbling and falling, but if you're just getting back up and you're getting back on track, Yah is pleased with the work that you're doing. Continue to remain steadfast um, and go to him if you sin and you make a mistake. Go to him, confess your sins, repent and turn from it and don't do it again. So this is my message today. I hope that this blesses someone. If this message blesses you, please uh, comment, like and comment below this video and please share it. And I pray that you all will have a blessed day.